It's okay? So good morning, hi everyone. I'm uh, Nick and I'm going to teach you some magic machine learning. Um, hopefully this is one of the examples that you'll remember and uh, you feel confident enough about to implement yourself. Uh, I know it's a fuzzy topic sometimes with AI and uh, machine learning and really big clouds and all data processing. Um, let's, this talk is really going to make it practical in a world that you know, which is Drupal, and also a world that I know quite well, is uh, the search world. Um, so let's create more relevant search results with Learn to Rank, um, and that's what we're going to do. Before we're going really in depth into the machine learning part, um, I'm going to talk about some basic concepts uh, in Drupal about search. Um, and about basic concepts of relevancy. So, for example, here in Drupal.org, uh, our beloved platform, I typed in install Apache. Um, most likely, I was not looking for machine learning and search and learn to rank and, and whatnot, but even though it's on the second uh, page. Even this page is not super relevant. Um, you actually expect something like this. Okay, how to start Drupal 8 on step 4, do this installation. Um, but for some reason, it's not there. I couldn't even find this page in the search results. I had to go through the navigation. So there's some relevancy issue. Um, all right. So to a really practical case, and uh, this is the case I'll be talking about throughout the, um, the presentation. This is a hospital in Belgium. Um, and the hospital in Belgium has an audit every year and uh, the auditor is from the government or some company that was hired by the government and they type in some words about maybe your invoice or about uh, the hygiene in the hospital and if the auditor doesn't find the right content they get minus points and maybe that has an impact for their subsidies so uh, in short the a uh, hospital could lose money if their search results are not relevant. That's a pretty big deal, no? Um, and then uh, maybe looking also at, at you as the audience and how we solve this traditionally. Um, I'm pretty sure um, that all of you have installed maybe Apache Solo or Search API or Elasticsearch or whatnot. How would you solve this? most likely with the boosting, and you say, ah, oh, maybe the content type article is more important, ah, oh, maybe the tag with medical, medical is more important. But it's just you as a person making guesses, maybe they're calculated guesses, but they're still guesses. Yeah, you are not measuring anything, and you also don't know what the impact is of changing these values compared to all the other things that you were trying to optimize. This is a really difficult thing to do. So here in this screenshot you see that the first one was fine, but then the next one that they actually wanted to see was number four, and then number six. All right. So I prepared a demo, and we'll get to that also afterwards, with Umami. Um, you're all familiar with Umami? Who is not, or who doesn't know? So Umami is an uh, install profile in Drupal core, um, and it's, uh, it's trying to make a real life demo or like a, a really nice demo environment for Drupal core to show to customers uh, what Drupal can do because by default if you install Drupal core it's this empty blue box that doesn't really show anything. This is a website for recipes. Uh, by default it comes I think with eight recipes. I uh, imported 300 other recipes just to make sure that the search uh, could work. Uh, so here for example we search for chocolate cake, I first get an ice box, whatever chocolate cake, and then I get the actual chocolate cake. Uh, this is a very simple example, but this one should actually be on the first result, because it's the basic chocolate cake. Um, so, let's take a look at the website. Alright. So let's see. Give me some other ingredient or a word that I can try on. Vanilla. Vanilla. Oh, there's nothing vanilla in here. Um, what? Soup? I think, oh, sorry, there's something wrong. I'll fix it here. 
soup. Or vanilla is probably also fine here. Yeah. All right. Let's do this basic training. Is this any relevant? Is this fine? All right. So now you're in the eye of the customer, right? So this is also what a customer in, in the project of the hospital did. They went to this uh, website. Um, maybe also vanilla ice cream is fine. Um, but these cookies, I don't really care. Um, maybe there is something else with vanilla. <coughs> it looks quite okay. Um, but just for the fun of it, I can also say relevant here. All right, let's go back to the presentation. I'll show you later how that works. So what is machine learning? And so now you were uh, a test, like you were people or a panel that were actually training or data sets or giving me training data. And you heard about machine learning, you need some training data to then generate a model that then executes it and then predicts whatever you give it according to the model to give it a result. So it makes predictions based on um, these training data, sample data sets. Traditional machine learning um, is prediction problems, it's classifications. Maybe you heard of null a long time ago, not that long time ago. Um, for those that don't know, it was the pre-CAPTCHA time or the pre re captcha time. It was a product from Dries that then got bought by Dries himself, um, which was on its own already quite a funny story. But I worked on Malum as well, um, and Malum was trying to solve uh, spam protection based on classification of the content. So it could see if you were honest or not, or um, if you had a reputation before of providing comments, so that you could do anonymous comments, uh, but it would filter it if it thought, nah, this doesn't, it looks a little shady, it would move it up. This is quite simple machine learning in a sense because you have some training data sets and it says either from percentage, yes or no, or something in the middle. All right? What we're trying to do with the machine learning in, in search classifications is a, a little bit more complex. And uh, we're trying to re-rank these items so you're not classifying an item, but you're basically giving it a model, and you give it to all these 10 or 100 results, and you try to reorder it based on what you know from the training data set. Okay? So it's trying to solve ranking problems. And the, the library or the algorithm behind it is called RankNet. RankNet is a model developed by universities. It uses all these complicated words like neural networks, and what not, and maybe you say, well, I'm not getting into that. Um, but it's a Java library, and it has just a CLI, similar like Drush. You don't know what Drush does, but you use it. This is similar. And so you give it input data, it gives you a model, and then you can use it. Okay? So this is a bit more into the, the scientific part. And so it tries to push whatever you gave it in the learning data set up in the ranking. So for every item, it ranks it against the model and it tries to push it up, okay? If you'd like to know more about this or talk about the science behind it, I'm happy to talk to you separately, but I might bore you if we get into that right now because you want to know, okay, how can I optimize my search? So let's move on a little bit. And instead of moving on, let's also take a step back. If you're configuring Drupal, uh, for search, you do have to understand the concepts of how to implement the search, or actually also how to understand what Solar and Elasticsearch is. Who hasn't worked with Solar or Elasticsearch or anything similar? Two or three people? So, Solar and Elasticsearch is basically what the data is in MySQL, but it's all in one table. It's all in one thing, and so it's a document. The document contains all the references, all the stuff you gather together from all these different tables. Um, that's pretty simple. Eh? So a document contains fields, the field is made of a type, and they're normalized by a processor. So for example, if you have a long word, it alone supplement, it's in Dutch, it's a medical term because I, I spent quite some time understanding 
how you can split it, but it means air alone is one word. You have supplement is another word. This type where the processors, they figure out or they know how to split the words on the right position. So air alone is one word, supplement is another one. If you search for supplement, it should find air alone supplement. It sounds easy, but it's not, because it means that your machine has to understand language, and then you're into the natural language processing world. And this is why we're also using technologies like Solar and Elasticsearch, and we've seen from that matter, because it's the same engine. There is no difference from Elasticsearch and Solar. Don't try to fight it. It's the same engine. It has a different API. Um, one is open source, the other one as well. One is from the Apache Foundation, the other one is from a company. Right? So that's as far as I'll take that discussion. Um, they're stored in an index and each document is standalone. There's a little wildcard there because if you add personalization to your solar uh, search or Elastic search, search, then you do some kind of references, but that's for another time. Right? So that's the basics. Also for some people, like most of you told me, ah, I used solar and Elastic search before. Have you looked at those queries that it generates? Not quite. Huh? You probably just enable it and you're happy that it works. I see people nodding. Huh? You're welcome huh? <laughs> that it works. But just the basics. Yeah? So it's not that different from a MySQL query or from any others. So here, this is from Search API Solar, the major version three. So there has been a lot of developments in the Search API Solar module and um, also in the way that it works with solar. So here we're doing a search for cookies. We're saying, okay, I want to search on an aggregated field, which could be my content and whatever else. Um, and I give it a priority of one and also search on the title because that's maybe not in my rendered entity and that give it priority five. This is how you would do the boosting in a traditional way. Okay. So then there's a new way of saying, okay, if you really want this document to flow to the top, there is in the module you can say this is more important, it adds it to another field called rules that boost documents. And then here, this FL means field list, and it says I want my identifier, score, my title, and my URL back into Drupal. And then Drupal does something magical with views, and it shows you whatever you want to see. You could also say, give me all my fields, don't do anything magic, and views shows you those fields. Uh, so either you do processing in Drupal for maybe access permissions, or you don't. It could also be that the stuff in your solar or Elastic search index is not in Drupal, because you feed it through other channels, and then it also shows it. All right? So then you say, okay, but I only want to have my only search index, which is the index identifier from Drupal, and then I only want to see my own site, because it's possible to index multiple sites into a single solar or search index, uh, but by default you only want your stuff that you indexed. And then the simplest one, give me 10 results. Pretty simple, no? So what is relevant? How do you define relevancy? If you're sitting with a customer and the customer tells you, ah, but this doesn't make sense, this is not what I want to see, um, oh, but this is shit, it's not like Google. Recognize the conversation? No? Um, and then maybe you reply. I heard it also uh, this morning. Yeah, but we don't have the budget like Google, or you want to give us maybe more budget, and you get into like, a weird fight, uh, which you cannot do. So let's take restaurants as an example. Imagine that you have a Drupal site full of restaurants. Why would one restaurant be more relevant when you're searching for a hamburger than another one? Because it might be close by, sure, location. Could there be another reason? Because what? It will actually sell hamburgers, but that's the basics. Eh? So indeed, yes, the hamburger term will respond. But what makes something more relevant? It's open now. It's open now. I imagine that the, the website has reviews. What could be the the rating of the reviews, maybe the amount of reviews as well. I said specialized in hamburgers, so that could maybe be a term. These are all kinds of different features, as you would call it, to make a certain restaurant more relevant when you're searching for hamburgers. 
How do you implement this today in your Drupal site? Facet could be one thing, but that doesn't make the, the ordering right. Because if you search just for hamburgers, you don't know how to make that hamburger restaurant with good rating and good reviews float to the top. Unless you sort maybe by rating, but then you're only doing the rating. You see the complexity here a bit? Um, so indeed, uh, uh, you could do amount of tags. This is for the recipe website that we'll show or that we have. The freshness, uh, the, the how more recent the article was created. The, the actual hamburger relevancy. Uh, but it could also be the type, uh, so it could be that you're also searching into the reviews. Probably the reviews are less important than the restaurants itself, depending. Uh, maybe it's in the URL. Another one that's, that's often uh, missed is maybe meta tags. Uh, you, do, you work so hard to make sure that Google knows how your website works. You probably forget to expose the same information to your internal search. And you're not alone, eh? Um, I'll show it later, but it doesn't work today. There's a patch that you have to install to make sure to get your meta tags in there. But back to the solar stuff. Um, this is how you def define these features in solar. There's a couple of features that you're not adding to the query itself on real time. It's the same query that I showed before. But you're just saying, okay, I have a description, and this is how you find the description. I have that amount of tags. All right, and you'll see how it defines. Based on the training data that we have for the recipes, based on these features, the machine learning model creates a mixture, creates the model, and it will tell Solar how important these things are based on the training that you gave it. So you no longer do the boosting of, oh, this is a five, this is a three, and you don't know what these numbers mean. I'm sure you don't because I also don't. Um, you can select these numbers, eh? maybe you've seen that in the index, but try to not do that, it doesn't make sense. Um, the freshness also, eh? you can add the freshness or the based on the creation date or the change date. So back to Drupal. Best practices today can be found at Drupal search with the .ch as an extension. It's based on the Umami install profile and we worked during the um, yeah, Drupal Dev Days and Drupal Cons and other events uh, to make sure that you can find it online. You can log in also, uh, and also the code is available on github.com. Uh, we recently updated it to Drupal 8.7, so it should be fairly recent. However, these are my SQL best practices. Solar or Elasticsearch best practices are different. Um, and I'll just show you quickly how different they are. So, what fields to index? Um, today in disclosure, this is without layout builder. That's also a whole different discussion. Um, but if you just use view modes today, you do a rendered item. So you show everything as HTML and you index that HTML towards solar. Don't try to be smart. Don't try to say, oh, this field and that field and this field and that field. You're making it too hard for yourself. Google doesn't do it, so why should you? Right? So. You can say in the field render HTML, I want to see it as an anonymous user, and then you can choose the view mode, and the search index view mode is part of Drupal core today. And so it was always the intention to be this, these best practices stay the same. So then yeah, these are the meta tags that I talked about. Um, if you want to in index those separately, because they will not be shown as the rendered item, because they're on the page level, um, you can uh, do this patch and get it in there. And then every other field that you index is useful for either facets or for the features that you define in a machine learning model. If you're indexing any other field just for showing it in, in views, that's probably not the right way to do it. Maybe there's always a use case, eh? um, but in most basic cases, it doesn't make sense. So then, this is also very confusing today. And so there is Search API Solar in the version 3. The, there is the Query Parser. It's here with the filter because you're searching. You have this little exposed filter box for searching. You do multiple words with e this max if you have more than one word or if it's a sentence. Um, it's my best practice. It doesn't mean that it works for you per se. But if you're willing to do this 
uh, learning to rank. It's the only way of doing it uh, because it gives you the direct input and it also transfers it to the machine learning model. Um, so then also, uh, what well, can you index? It could be the aggregated fields and the title on top, maybe the meta tags. And this is just the processors. You can do the highlighting, also from solar. You filter the HTML because no one cares about your tags on the HTML. Be careful there, again, if you do accessibility. Maybe you don't want to filter out some of the parts of HTML. Uh, this is very complicated because how do you define what to filter and what not? If it's just visible, also invisible. Could be that we have to make a new filter. Um, I thought about it today because of the discussion with Barry with Lehman Kuhn and that it also becomes required for the government. Um, it's a complicated thing. Uh, and then you can maybe do type specific boosting if you really are sure that your restaurants are more relevant than the reviews. So then how to get the highlighting, this is like the little snippet that also Google has. And so you retrieve this from solar. Solar will always be smarter than whatever you make yourself. Uh, so don't try to do this, it's fine. And then you also have to do this other checkbox, retrieve highlighted snippet. All right. And then there's more complexity on how to get this in Drupal. Um, and you'll get this presentation, don't worry. It's also, um, I think, in the demo. Uh, there's some checkboxes you have to do to create the six service. And then more fields to add. So back to learn to rank. This is again from the hospital that um, we helped. And what you see here is the original search. And so there's a couple of terms on the top. And what it means is the, the recall, how many of all the relevant results showed in my top five or top ten. So we said, okay, these are relevant, all on page two and on page three and whatever. And only half of what the hospital or the, the auditor wanted to find was visible in the top five, but even worse, still only half was only visible in the top ten. That's like dramatic. Uh, finding invoicing information or finding uh, if you have allergies from being in a hospital bed and you cannot find it, you don't get very confident in the hospital itself that they know what they do. And so this is, this is important stuff. After, and there's a little video here, but you can see this is from a machine learning model. We got it to 85% relevancy in the top five and 91% in the top 10. This obviously also added best practices. And so just by enabling best practices, we got it to 76 and 81. So this is a lot that you can do already yourself. Uh, but then adding the machine learning model, really put the cherry on the cake, uh, and they brought it up to 91% of whatever they expected to see. Um, and that also worked. There's a, a Python application that I saw first that falls them. Do you know Fosdem? Have you ever heard of Fosdem? For those that I don't, it's I think the biggest, uh, most likely it is the biggest open source conference in the world. Um, and it's in Brussels. It's, I don't know, 4,000 people, maybe more. Uh, it's massive. Um, and someone of uh, Bloomberg Media, which is a newspaper um, agency, or I don't know how to call it, showed this technique, um, and they use this in their newspaper websites to make sure that these results are more relevant. And they have a, a Python application, and it was on GitHub, and I modified it to, to make it work with Drupal. Um, and I'm also in the process of moving this all into a module so that you don't have to do anything in Python or anything external. Um, and what you see here is that you can find all these separate things on the right. So if you, for example, if you look for Facebook, I couldn't find anything about the Facebook page of the hospital uh, because it has a zero. Some of them have a one. So you can really like, fine tune uh, for specific results and maybe change either the content or change the model. So then, then this is what I explained and the recall from all the relevant results. Uh, what's the um, break line between all the shown relevant results? you should get as close as possible, obviously. 
So then this rank up library, uh, you can train the model. And the, the funny thing, or like what my experience was and that got me mind blown, is that it's natively supported in Solid. There's nothing you need to do. There's literally nothing except for maybe a config change to get support for this. Um, it's since uh, Solar 7 point something. So if you're on the latest Solar version, uh, you can get this to work without lots of, like, yeah, without too much complexity. For Elasticsearch enthusiasts, I have to disappoint you, you have to compile the whole thing yourself. And this is again the difference between maybe the two. Um, I think Elasticsearch is more into data processing, log lines, and they're really good at that as well. Um, but this is lesser of a priority, it seems, in that community. But there are examples out there if you're willing to recompile the whole thing. So let's look at such a model. Um, let me go here. All right. Just in case that you're curious on how that looks like, eh? such a model. In case you're trying to understand machine learning, I would suggest you to stop. Uh, because this is what the output is of such a learning of the model. Right? And I don't know if you see my scroll bar on the right. Ah, yeah, there. Yeah, it almost stops. It's like 4,000 lines of rights and lefts and features and thresholds. Um, but the interesting thing is that you don't see any words in here. You don't see cake. You don't see chocolate. It doesn't care. Right? So what it did is it trained how important a specific feature is based on given parameters. And it's not a, a linear thing. It's based on a certain navigation, uh, a neural network, right? as you will. This is the mini brain of your solar re-ranking. Um, all right. Um, so how to apply this model, this is the addition to the query that we saw, how you can enable this. So after you train it, you say, okay, just use the model. It's as simple as that. Um, and then in the, the Drupal module that I have available, you just select it. And it will add this to the query itself. Um, it's available already. You still need to refine it to make sure you can do the ranking yourself in Drupal. Right now, that's uh, a modification that we did. Um, and then if you look at the actual results, um, you can see that all the ones that we checked green are on the top. And uh, let's see if that also works. Eh? So here we see, okay, we have this caramel salt and uh, I know this example, chocolate cake. I don't want the hazelnut ice box cake, but I want the other ones. Okay, so what we do, and I'll make it a bit bigger. This is the most magic command that you'll see. So um, what we're doing here is we use, for now, this Python, library, this Python application to go to the Java library, give it the training data, give it the solar instance. It has, knows the features. It sends the training data to the Python application that sends it to solar, and then it returns, yeah, this is the data from the features. Then it generates a neural network, and it creates the JSON blob that you saw. So, let's also do this. It's thinking really hard, and it's done. Oh, it didn't take very long, and you don't need this massive cloud computing cluster with 10 GPUs or whatever to do this. Um, so now, how that looks like. So I have chocolate cake. And now here, on the right, so this is called 63, just to make sure I didn't lie. It's the same number. We just generated it, um, I'm changing it, and you can see that all the results that we ranked as relevant are on the top. Uh, so if we look at the statistics, um, you can see that initially 70% of what I wanted was in the top five. After the model, 
percent of what I wanted was in the top five. Um, with the top ten, it's rather irrelevant because it's a demo site with not enough content. So most likely, everything I wanted was in the top ten. And so that's why we went to the top five. You want to give it a try? Give me another word. Carrot. Carrot. So the first one looks like an article. Uh, it's not very relevant. Glazed carrots is somewhat relevant. Somewhat, maybe this is the most relevant one. No? Anything else you want to see when you're looking for carrots? This one maybe. All right. So let's train another model. This one is called 64. We have 64, and you can see all the carrots went to the top. And if we then go back to the, the ranking, you can see the 64 is the latest one, and so now it has 96% in the top 10, uh, and 92, as you can see, the carrot thing probably added a bit more, and the original even went down more. Um, because yeah, the carrots were not at the right position. So that's the magic. Okay, so in a conclusion, we compiled the data set, we trained a machine learning model that is not that complicated. Yeah. We uploaded it to Solar and then we change the query to re-rank uh, or to add the model to our search and then internally Solar re-ranked all these results based on the model that was generated. Um, you did see in the model that it doesn't have any words like carrots or whatever you added. Um, it's really based on these feature important sets, uh, it's the, the biases that you had. But as you also saw in, in the example of the hospital, you need to have a good data model first. If you don't understand the basics, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, so um, obviously it also has to have a little product pitch, uh, otherwise I wouldn't be here. So there is also a work for Drop Solid. Um, we do this for customers and can also help you do this in your company. If you'd like, also have a platform that supports this natively. Um, and if you got interested and you're looking for a job, come to me. If you're a company and you're looking for the solution, you can also come uh, to me if you'd like. I hope you found it interesting. Um, I hope maybe you can go home and, and try this yourself. Um, ask me about all the resources or where you can find this. This is not black magic. There is no proprietary part of the solution in this stock. Uh, so you can really do this yourself, but you have to spend some time getting it right. Thank you. Are there any questions? No, so uh, how it works, because you saw the model doesn't have a word. Eh? So uh, if you train maybe 20% of your data set, it will use the same model for all the other words as well. So it extrapolates whatever you teach it to all the other results. So maybe with 5% of training, you'll get maybe half of all the other results more relevant. Because you're doing that on the feature sets, not on words. This is very different on how you did it in the past, uh, where you have the boost document or whatever, and then you say, oh, for this work, I add this result to the top. Stop doing that. It doesn't make any sense. Content changes. The way of importance doesn't. And you can only use this with uh, solar or spread a marketing group without it. You can for sure not do this with MySQL. Um, as long as you have another tool that enables the library, the Ranklet library, you could probably do it. And as I told you, the Solar has it natively from Solar 7 something, Elasticsearch has to recompile. Um, but I don't have experience in 
that either works or not. assignment of two weeks where we spent one week and a half fixing the Drupal site and one day of training. Uh, so the, the training for one, for one person? Yeah, so one person of the marketing team of the hospital came to the office with the Python application because we don't have it online anywhere yet. Um, they clicked the buttons and that was it. Um, another complication there was, oh, but I'm expecting this results, I'm not seeing it. And then there was a person next to it that was fixing the content in Drupal. It has nothing to do with the machine learning model. Uh, but it's interesting to see. about these features um, and it could be a combination of something so you do need to have some solar knowledge on how to make these small queries that define a feature and think about the restaurant example um, as well uh, how do you measure them on the reviews you have to write a sub query on how to get the number or index the number of reviews um, and similar with uh, for example if you want to have the personal rating or you say oh this is my favorites then it becomes really complex because those are individual and then you have to add on and then you're actually personalizing search. Uh, you could do it and it could be another feature uh, where you're linking with another document based on another field that you're searching. But then it gets complex. Thank you. Because there's a, a blog post that I wrote about uh, and, and that actually someone in solid growth as well about this kind of where you have to have the compound words first and then your synonyms and so for them a alone and supplement supplement synonym so maybe you also want to find a alone on the leaf as a synonym for a alone supplement and then it becomes really complex so um, these are solar knowledges if you have that covered then the machine learning will Follow it. I was trying to solve it with uh, using the taxonomy as a mechanism. Uh, uh, what I suggest to you? Uh, if you in your meta tags add all the synonyms that maybe could be found in your index in the meta tags, then your article will show up. I'm, I'm not displaying it in any way. No, that's fine. You can still index things that are not showing. But again, I wouldn't recommend recommend you fill it every month or so. It's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Unless there's any other question, I'd like to thank you for your attention and uh, good luck in uh, figuring it out. <laughs> yeah.